I intend to paint an underwater scene so I'm going to um, simply have a mixed color wash with colors that I associate with the ocean. I have some Bandai green, some cobalt turquoise, some ultramarine blue, more to cobalt turquoise, some cerulean, and some cobalt blue. You can use any brand you want. I'm not even going to mention that the brands here because it really doesn't matter as long as you like them. But do not use blues such as Taylor Blue that stain because you want to be able to lift these colors. We will be painting a sea turtle and the first step for that after this dries is to lift with some water and paper towel or Kleenex we'll be lifting the paint that we are now laying down. And these colors are all colors that will lift fairly easily. I'm not so sure about the Van Dyke green but there's not a lot of it so it doesn't matter. And after we lift it we will return to the white of the paper. Not completely, of course, but close. So right now I'm just kind of adding some color as I like to give some interest. But see how easy it is to lift, even just putting some... See how it becomes white again? This is Strathmore cards. Strathmore watercolor cards. And I really don't like them for layered work because it's very difficult to lay a second wash without lifting the first. However, for the purposes of this project, that quality that makes them inappropriate for layered work makes them really good for this. I think I'm going to stop here, even though I could easily spend the rest of the day adding paper, adding color and moving it around. I like the granulation that's happening up here. I like that it's a little bit lighter up top because our sea turtle is going to be on the bottom looking up. One thing I'm going to do before putting this away is to splash some water on it, splatter some water on it. However, the timing for that is important because if it's too wet, it's not gonna, if the surface is too wet, it's not gonna have the desired intent. But I think it's getting good now. So, I'm going to first um, splatter a little bit of a darker blue. This is a blue Appetite Genuine, again for variety, and then I'm going to splatter a little bit of just plain water. Now that the paper is dry, we're going to lift the color around the shape of the turtle. I have drawn a very basic sea turtle shape with white pencil. You can use any pencil. I use white pencil because I could see it better. And then with just clean water and a brush that's on the stiff side, I wouldn't recommend using your Kolinsky sable for this because you get a Put a little bit of force in it. You're kind of scrubbing 
the color away where you need it to. And as you can see, it comes off fairly easily because of the paper and because of the type of paint that we use. which is, again, pigments that are not staining. Now, I'm just using my brush here, but you can also use brush and paper towel. Actually, the paper towel at this point is quite efficient in getting rid of whatever was left of the pigment. this dry completely. It's pretty dry because of the paper towel, but I'd rather not risk it and let it dry. It's time to turn to my little turtle, and I'm going to first put in a very light wash of golden ochre. This is by Sennelier. You could just as well use a raw sienna. It's just to give the body some warmth. I'm gonna lift it a little bit from the edges. Then I'm going to go in with some water. I'm going to go in with burnt sienna and suggest almost a pattern. I don't have a drawing here, just the The paper is a little bit wet from the see, from the ochre, so it's going to spread a little. And I'm just kind of suggesting some possible patterns. that are vaguely reminiscent of what the patterns of a sea turtle might look like. No one's going to accuse me of doing scientific illustration, but nor am I an especially geometrically skilled person, but I'm kind of just putting patterns here that suggest rather than describe. As long as it's wet, I can keep adding color without the marks getting too specific. Now for some variety I can use some burnt umber on the legs or fins. What would you call them? I don't know. Legs or fins and the head. And maybe even just around the outside of the shell itself. And 
And perhaps, again for variety, I'm going to put a little permanent rose here and there. See, I'm putting paint on rather thick and that prevents... I want to keep the markings, I don't want them to get any closer together than they already are. I'm going back in with golden ochre. And now I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to use some Blue Appetite Genuine to give a suggestion of eyes. And just general dimension to the different parts of the body. To be very careful because it's lifting very easily. But basically the legs are a little bit lower than the shell, so I want it to be a little bit less vivid. The initial color lifted off so well. I'm going in with burnt umber now. It lifted off so well that the body of the turtle is quite bright. I've done this kind of painting before and it's not always this bright. Uh, because a little bit of the blue can stay on the bottom. And that of course mixes with the brown and oranges to neutralize them a little bit so then you end up with something not quite as bright. I'm using burnt umber to define a little bit the scales not too precisely but a little bit. It gives the turtle more of a finished sense. The last thing I'm going to do is something with which I have ruined several paintings before, so here's hoping. I'm going to splatter this, or spatter this rather than splatter, with some gold ink. And I did this after covering the actual tortoise. I actually want some up here. And I am going to call this done.